kwanza narejesha kwa kesa mkituku. All right, thank you so much, uh, Rashid Abdullah and uh, Trevor Umbija there. And of course, we just introduced our cabinet secretaries that are here in studio. We're still waiting to be joined by Nahumi Chawafula, who's the Minister for Health. And I want to begin by giving you an opportunity to sort of describe to us, because um, you've been in office for not one year, yes, as the president has been, but nearly there. So maybe if we begin with you, uh, cabinet secretary Simon Chiluguin, tell us about, on account of what you've been able to achieve, based on what the promise was, but also yourself, what you've been able to achieve uh, these many months, and now in three minutes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sam. Uh, uh, my name is Simon Chilugui, uh, cabinet secretary, Ministry of Cooperative and Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises. My mandate is on two uh, roles, one on cooperatives and the other is on MSME. On the cooperatives, the really, the, the, the role is to promote the growth and development of cooperatives uh, through provision of enabling policy and legal framework. As we speak today, we have over 28,000 cooperatives registered in Kenya and over 10,000 are active. This year alone, we have been able to register about 1,874 cooperatives. These cooperatives spread across all overall economic productive sectors, including agriculture like dairy, coffee, tea, and also cotton. And then in financial services, we have circles and investments. We are also in housing, transport, mining, fishing, among others. Mm -hmm. in the, in this, during this year, we focused on reforms in the legal, uh, reforming the legal instruments like resubmission of the cooperatives bill, the proposed amendment of, on circle societies like to have a gar deposit guarantee fund to ensure that the shilling in a circle mm -hmm. is as safe as a shilling in a bank. We've also promoting the shared services. All these are before cabinet now. And, uh, and also, we have focused on modernization to increase. You remember our Kenya Kwanzaa manifesto was increase milk production in Kenya right. from 4.2 billion liters per year to 10.2 billion liters per year. And to manage that production, we need to modernize already we finished during the year Nyambene KCC plant in mm -hmm. Meru. We finished Kiganjo in Nyeri, and right. we have finished Nyaururu. And also, we have equipped further, equipped Eldoret, Kitale, Meritini in Mombasa, Dandora, and even Sotik. Okay. Currently, we have a, about a budget. Pro, uh, we've already gotten support from government, and we are embarking on a program to modernize. On the MSME sector, you remember, Sam, our campaign was premised on uh, the ASLA, the bottom-up economic transformation mm -hmm. agenda. At that time, two things were found out. Number one, access to affordable credit and aggregation of markets. Hence, the president immediately uh, after taking office and giving us this assignment, he gave me 23 days right. to establish, come up with regulations and, uh, and, the, and the establishment of the ASLA fund. Mm -hmm. We went full throttle, met with parliament, uh, approved the regulations, submitted to cabinet and approved and then eventually setting up of the ASLA fund. As we speak today. Right. Uh, we we'll be talking about the details, Waziri. I yeah. just wanted to uh, move to the next uh, cabinet secretary, Nimrod. Um, uh, nafikiri vyema ni kukaribisha waziri uh, Moses Kuria uweze pia na wewe eh, kwa dakika chache tu kuweza kutueleza eh, manake kwa misingi ambayo mliingia uh, serikalini na nafikiri mmehudumu sasa miezi kama kumi hivi eh, uwezo wa watu kuweza kufanya biashara hapa nchini pengine utugusie tuko wapi na tulianzia wapi kwanza asante sana nataka kukushukuru na kushukuru Runinga Citizen na shirika Royal Media Services kwa sababu nimerudi kwa, kwa rekodi za historia nikauliza kama mlifanya jomo at one nikaambiwa hapana nikauliza kama mlifanya moi at one nikaambiwa hapana nikauliza kama mlifanya kibaki at one nikaambiwa hapana pia nikafanya uchunguzi nikakuta hata uhuru at one hamkufanya kwa hiyo kwa sababu sasa mnafanya ruto at one kwa mara ya kwanza no. katika historia ya jamhuri ya Kenya Nikuzama ya kwamba tunapiga hatua na mjadala vile tuliahidi wakati wa uchaguzi kwamba mjadala wa Kenya utabadilika 
tutaacha kuongea maneno ya makabila maneno ya watu binafsi mm -hmm. na tuongee maneno ya sera <coughs> kwa hivyo kwanza ni washukuru kwa hivyo kwa sababu ni kusema sababu hamu kuona inafaa wakati huo mwingine waziri hatukuepo wakati wa jomo na moi eh <laughs> biblia imesema ya kwamba to those who more is given more is expected, more is expected. Yeah. kwa hivyo sisi mmeona wale watu ambao wako na uwezo wa kuwajibika ni serikali ya William Ruto na Kenya kwanza. Kwa hivyo ni washukuru. Kwa sababu huu mjadala ni ni ni, ni nguzo. Ni inaambatana na ile nguzo tukusema kwamba mjadala ubadilike tuulizane maswali ya sera, maswali ya kiuchumi na maswali ya vile eh, maslahi na manufaa ya watu wetu iko. Mheshimiwa kwa sababu kwa utangulizi kwa kifupi tu kuhusu biashara kwa sababu ni utangulizi. Naam, nafikiria na ilikuwa ya muhimu kwangu Asante. kuweka hii maneno katika perspective dio eh, wale watu wa dadisi wa kihistoria pia waweze. Kusema kweli eh, Nimrod wakati sisi tulichukua uh, serikali uh, kwa tumekuwa mimi binafsi nimekuwa kwa ofisi ya miezi kumi na tumeweza kupiga hatua sana. Kwanza uh, ule uchumi ambao sisi tuliridhi kutoka kwa uh, serikali ambayo tulipata hapo mbeleni mimi kwangu nilipata all the indicators all the critical economic indicators were not pointing to a good picture manufacturing had dropped as a contribution of gdp from 9% to 7% export as a ratio of gdp had dropped from just 8 years uh, from 28% to 10% no. And on the issue of foreign direct investment, it had stagnated at around $500 million. Mm. So what we have been doing, without a template that we found in the office, is to actually start restart the cogs of the engine of things uh, to do with manufacturing, no. right. to do with industrial parks, no. to do with special economic zones, and actually restart the engine of growth. because. What we found in the office, uh, Nimrod, yeah. is that we found, we were talking about inflation, debt, and all these things. Sure. But we were able very quickly yes. to refocus the country to the fact that you cannot uh, have economic growth when you stop production. Asante. And I'm very proud that what we've done now to set up a foundation of right. restarting As the engine of production. production. And of course, we'll get more details as we get into it. But uh, see us, uh, Zachary, maybe in a short um, a statement, you can tell us about your 10 months in office and what you've been able to, that you would say, the key highlight of your tenure. Uh, thank you very much, Sam. Uh, and good evening to all the viewers. As you've heard, my name is Zachary Njeru, Minister for Land, uh, Public Works, Housing and Urban Development. Um, one of the key aspects that uh, we have done as a government in the last uh, 10 months uh, touches on matters housing. Uh, it's good to let Kenyans know that uh, the housing demand in urban areas in Kenya is uh, 250,000 units per year. Uh, but what the market is providing through the private sector uh, is uh, 50,000 uh, units. Also to note that out of the 50,000, 2% is only 2% that goes to the low income earners. So the, the, the gap, the deficit of uh, 200,000 needs to be, you know, to be closed. And therefore, wow. as a government, we have taken that deliberate <coughs> effort to make sure that through affordable housing program, right. yes, we come up uh, uh, and fill that, uh, that gap. Asad. Two, when it comes to lands, I'm just highlighting the few ones because I'm sure we'll go into details. Mwishimu wa tusame, kwa sababu ya muda, tuataka tutu kwenye kwenye tarifa, alafu tutarudi, tutufafanue zaidi kwa maswali na majibu. Asante sana, nashukuru. Right, and we now take you to Lulu and Jeff for the news this evening. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Nimrod. And thank you, gentlemen, for all your contributions. We're going to be going to all our teams throughout the course of the evening and give you the latest Ruto one year later. In the meantime... Let's get to the news, Lulu. Naam, kwa sasa niweza kupasha mtazamaji ambapo siku hii ya leo keso kesi na yotaka kusitishwa kwa shiria ya fedha ya mwaka alifu mbili shuna tatu meendele ya katika maha kama kunchi ni hii leo. Na walalamishi wa kiongozo na seneta obusie okia omtata wa militaka jopu la majaji wa tatu wanausikiliza kesi hii kusitisha utekelezaji wa shiria hiyo kwa kuwa inakiuka shiria. 
Hata hivyo unaopinga ombi hili wakiongozwa na aliyekuwa mwanasheria mkuu Gidhu Mugai wameelezea mahakama kwamba ufadhili na utekelezaji wa shughuli za serikali utaathirika mno endapo sheria hiyo ya ushuru itatupiliwa mbali. I just admit that any bill touching on the bill of rights must be considered by both houses of parliament because even the county governments are subject to the bill of rights. Uh, taxation affects property rights. It's also an administrative action under Article 47 and Article 40 respectively. So this matter is non-justiciable. It is not a justiciable matter. It does not raise legal issues. It raises policy preference issues. Those policy preference issues do not belong here because we have a government that is governed by a constitution that demarcates the separation of powers. Na mtazamaji nao mashirika sio ya kiserikali sasa yanasema kwamba mwaka wa kwanza wa utendakazi wa Rais William Ruto haujaridhisha na wala kuafikia ahadi zake. Mashirika hayo yanasema kwamba Rais Ruto hajatekeleza kikamilifu ahadi zote ilizotoa kwa Wakenya alipoingia ofisini mwaka jana aidha kwenye kikaona wanahabari hapa jijini Nairobi mashirika hayo yalikosoa namna maafisa wa polisi walivyokabiliana na waandamanaji upinzani na kunyanyaswa kwa vyombo vya habari kwenye mwaka wa kwanza wa serikali Despite their initial efforts to rectify past governance errors, these attempts are overshadowed by deliberate constitutional violations, empty rhetoric, abuse of human rights, and perpetuation of state demography. The president, his deputy, and other key officers are, are taking responsible actions and using illiberal language in clear breach of Article 10 of the Constitution. The assertion that Kenya operates as a country of shareholders is a violation of the Constitution. It is regrettable and it's threatening to the public that this government is yet to learn the value of life. For police to shoot unarmed civilians to death or to go in their homes and beat them to death, this is unconstitutional. Civil society documented over 75 cases of judicial, extrajudicial killings and forced disappearances during the period between March and August 2023. Shockingly, police killings have become normalized in this administration. Na mna utafiti wa punde zaidi uliofanywa na kampuni ya Tifa unaashiria kwamba asilimia 38 ya wakenya ndio wanaamini kwamba serikali imetekeleza hadi iliyotoa kwa wakenya. Utafiti huu uliotolewa siku ambayo serikali ya Kenya kwanza inaadhimisha mwaka mmoja wa utawala wake unaashiria kwamba asilimia hamsini ya wakenya wanahisi kwamba ahadi ya kushukisha karama ya maisha haija za matunda. Asilimia 49 ya wakenya nao wakihisi kwamba taifa linaelekea mahali pazuri huku asilimia na sita ukisema kwamba hawaoni mabadiliko yote hasa kiuchumi. Utafiti huu ulifanywa kati ya tarehe nane na tarehe kumi mwezi huu wa Septemba na ulilenga wa Kenya ilfu moja na saba kutoka maini utisa nchini. Na mbali na hamu tazamaji ni kwamba washukiwa mawaji ya msusi Jen Mwende katika eneo la Mlolongo, county ya Machakos. Wataendelea kuzuiliwa kwa siku kumi zaidi ilikutua nafasi kwa uchunguzi kuendelea. Evelyn Wanza, Katumbu na Faith Nda Mbaki Alo, wa, were walifikishwa katika mahakama ya mavoko hileo. Ata hivyo mshukiwa mkuu uh, Januaris Musau aliachiliwa kwa dhamana na sasa atakuwa shahidi mkuu wa upande wa mashtaka kwenye kesi hii ya mawaji. Polisi walitoa habari kwamba Mwende huenda alitoweka kabla ya kupatikana amewawa kutokana na mzozo wa kimapenzi uliomhusisha Musau mkewe Evelyn Wanza na mwanamke mwingine aliyetambulika kama Phyllis Mbivi mwili wa Mwende ulipatikana kwenye shimo la choo hapo jana <tos> All right, Lulu, thanks so much for that. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. Uh, we'll continue our coverage. And we're going to go first because there's been a whole slew of polls that just came out in the last few days. We find our very own Victoria Rubadiri in the Wananchi studios with some guests. Vicky? 
Indeed, Jeff and Lulu, I'm in the opinion poll studio. Let me quickly introduce my guests. We have Angela Ambido, who is the founder and CEO of InfoTrack Research and Consulting. Thank you so much for coming in. We have Caroline Gaita, Executive Director of Mzalendo Trust. And last but not least, Dr. Tom Wolf, Research Analyst at TIFA. Thank you all for joining me. What's been interesting, the common theme across the poll findings was most Kenyans feel the country is going in the wrong direction. And this is primarily linked to the cost of living. Angela, interesting stat that came out of the InfraTrack poll. The president got a C. You know, we're obsessed with grading. What does that mean? Because it showed the average in terms of how he's performed in the last year. But what informed that grade? Uh, Victoria, thank you very much. Uh, this was a, a very simple question. Yeah which is a perception question on the president's performance based on you know what that which the citizenry perceives to be the president's role so we didn't actually query in detail as we did in december all the promises that he had made uh, and said that he would do in his first 100 days that we did you know in detail so this time round we just asked a simple question uh, for the citizenry to rate the president's performance, overall performance in his first year, uh, on a scale of one to ten, and so different people uh, on the sample of a thousand gave the president a score, and that was then consolidated into a mean score, which then was the 55 percent that he got. Okay. Um, so in essence, it's an average score, and if you perhaps looked at the the, the poll findings, then you see that there was quite a substantive number of people who actually gave him a poor rating. Mm. Uh, now, the way the averages work is that if you also have on the extreme side mm. quite a number of people giving you a good rating, then indeed it will, you know, when you average it out, your mean score would be a mean score that sits pretty much in the middle. Right. Right. Uh, and so, you know, it depends on how one wants to look at it. I mean, uh, you and I were just talking about our kids going into university yeah. and, and of course the, the grades they have to get to, mm. to make it the threshold. Right. And so a C score at this stage for, uh, you know, a government uh, that came in on a pedestal of, of wanting to do better, yeah. uh, claiming to have the solutions, is by no means uh, not a good score and okay. should worry uh, the government of the day. Let me bring Tom in here because you gave him an average of 38. What does that number actually mean and what were you kind of using to appraise the president? Well, thank you very much for asking the question. In a way, it just piggybacks onto what Angela just said. And Dada Lulu at the from Saisha Kidogo, it wasn't actually the percent does not represent a proportion of respondents. What we did is exactly what Angela said. We asked all of our respondents to give a score from zero to five on to what extent they think that the government has implemented its promises. Now, I have to confess, and I shouldn't be doing this in front of our competitor, that when we asked the original question, uh, which was, can you remember two promises that were made during the campaign mm -hmm. by Kenya Kwanzaa? 18%, they said they couldn't remember any. Now, I know some people are busy milking cows or digging shambos or whatever. Uh, my guess is, I guess I would have to check their education level, some people who voted for this government and continue to support it, didn't want to mention any promises because they know most of them, especially the cost of living one, they haven't made much progress with. Mm. So maybe they were lying and saying they didn't remember any promise. Yeah. That one I can't know. But what I will say to directly answer your question, we asked everybody on a scale of zero to five how far the government has gone in implementing the promises. Only 7% gave a five, meaning completely implemented. Okay. Um, just to go through these percentages, 18% said zero. Mm. And then score one, 12%, score two, 23%, score three, 27%, score four, 11, and score five, 7%. So we did just what Angela did. We just calculated an arithmetic mean so that the result was 38%. Again, of the total public's 
view of the extent to which promises have been implemented, not a proportion of respondents yeah. who think that the government has done that. So, but for many people, you know, it's, it's not a simple, I was never good in maths myself, but I think it's very important for Angela yeah. to make that point, because even if the topic was a little bit different, that's the same method we used okay. to come up with that percent. Let me come to Caroline, because even though Kenyans may not have remembered the promises, Mzalendo Trust has been tracking those, and that's by status, and you're also looking at categories. So take us through that promises dashboard and, and what kind of informed it as well. Okay. Um, thank you so much, uh, Victoria. Thanks uh, to my panelists. So yes, we did um, develop a promise tracker, and this was informed by two things. Mm -hmm. In 2019, 2019-2020, we undertook a research to review what the previous administration had promised Kenyans in their manifesto and how that had been um, implemented, especially in terms of legislative uh, proposals. As you're aware, Mzalento Trust, we keep an eye on parliament right. and we wanted to see whether the executive and, and, and the legislature were really speaking <clears> the same <throat> language. And what we realized was that one, there was a disconnect, but most importantly, Kenyans were not very interested in what political parties promised during campaigns. Mm. So during the elections, we then came up with different tools that would, en would enable Kenyans to know what was in these political manifestos. And subsequent to the elections then, we looked at the manifesto, the plan, but we also looked at the Azimio manifesto, the two of them, yeah. and said, look, Kenyans, this, if this, whichever government comes into office, these are the promises that they have made for you. And so we came up with this tracker that uh, only uh, is based on the promises that were kept and the progress that has been made. And because for us the interest is also on parliament, we were interested to then see what or how many of these promises are translating into the legislative proposal. And I could get into that a little bit later. Certainly. So yeah. in total, just looking at the promises in the plan, about 107, um, 100, 187 of them touching on different things. Right. Others, of course, have been made subsequent to the elections. You know, the president has been addressing either a rally or a meeting or a cabinet briefing, and they have come up with things mm. they have promised they would do. And so we've kept populating those. Why did we do it? One of the things that um, people have talked about the last elections was that it's, it's one of the few that has really been issue-based. And so we hope by keeping track of what has been promised and what's being done, Kenyans can begin to change the narrative and begin yeah. to look at promises and implementation as opposed to issues that are outside what has been promised. So out of the 187, how many have been fulfilled so far? Um, so we went a step further, 100, first 100 days, yeah. one year, short term yeah. and long term. So the idea is that at the end of the five years, we'll do an analysis. Okay. For the, f the average, looking at what has started and what is continuing, mm -hmm. It's about 43%. 43%. Yeah. What's ongoing at 34%. Okay. What's completed at 9%. And we'll dig deeper into yeah. what that 43% actually is in terms yeah. of the projects. But let's quickly cross over to the shareholder center where Trevor and Rashid are standing by. Na mshukran sana Victoria Rubadiri kwa kweli kuna mengi ambayo tutayazungumzia hapa katika ukumbi wa shareholders na mimi na Trevor na Dante kwenda moja kwa moja kuzungumzia ile masuala ambayo kwa kweli yanakanganya sana wa, wa Kenya na nitaanza na sehemu ambayo wa Kenya ukimbilia sana panapokuwa na shida ambapo ni katika majengo ya bunge uh, na niko na kiongozi hapa ambaye si mwingine ni ndugu yetu Roban Bui takatuzungumza kwa zaidi uh, kwa asilimia moja kwanza kama kiongozi unaipa asilimia ngapi serikali ya Kenya kwanza kija kwa swala zima la garama ya maisha. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think I would uh, give them about 10%. And 10% just because they've shown up in the office every day uh, in neat suits. But the reality is that uh, when it comes to issues of uh, cost of living, uh, which was one of the promises that they gave during the campaigns, they have failed this country. Because uh, you see, the first thing that you have to do when you deal with cost of living is ensure that uh, you bring the you, you make sure that disposable income is available for the people at the same time of course uh, then you, you you ensure that the prices of goods and services are also lowered now the minute they brought the finance bill the first finance bill under this administration they pushed up the tax regime that raised the cost of all all goods and services because the minute you touch on fuel 
then everything goes up because fuel touches on transportation, fuel touches on the cost of electricity, fuel touches on everything. So basically, even manufacturing. So basically what happened is that uh, the cost of all goods and services went up. At the same time, the same uh, finance bill, they've gone into the pockets of Kenyans because everybody with a salary has been affected tremendously by this regime. So they have reduced disposable income. Those people are being made to pay, people are made, being made to pay for uh, a levy for, um, I think, uh, housing. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you are aware that there's a proposal now to even raise uh, the, the, the you know, hospital insurance fund. Yeah. So basically, what they have done is raise the cost of uh, goods and services and reduce the amount of money that is available for expenditure. Okay. So how then do you expect the country to move forward? So it's a 10%. Let me bring in Willis again on this. And Willis is an advocate of the High Court and also the Secretary General's affairs in a party, have the promises been kept when it comes to the cost of living? No promise has been kept. In fact, let me say this. The facts speak for themselves. I listened to the ministers speaking. I can tell you no Kenyan remembers what they said. The facts speak for themselves. They are not even able to articulate what issues are. When they came into office, the Kenyans were far much better in terms of their economic condition than they are today. You measure government based on the positive impact that it has on Kenyans. Last year, Kenyans were buying food, were able to access services at a higher rate than they are today. Today, it is more and more pain. In fact, when you listen even to the Bonanchi, this is the studios that was what was being covered before, people are just complaining about food. We are now reduced to a situation where all that is promised that we are sure will come is more taxation. We have reached a point where we're going to even tax swimming. Swimming, which somebody says a luxury, but in essence, it's more of a life skill. It's a, it, it can save your life. It's even a sport. But Kenya Kwanza has not kept any promise. In fact, if you look at the promise they've kept, the initial ones that could be mentioned, maybe somebody will tell you that we've appointed judges. That has now been reduced to Mambo Ni Matatu. Mambo Ni Matatu, which is outside the rule of law rubric. So for me, I'll give them a D minus, and D minus just for appearing. Na namba pengine uh, Trevor kama kabla kuingilia Faith kuna swala moja tatuzungumze utalizunguza kwa lugha ambayo itakuwa ni rais kwako serikali iliingia wakati wa kuna kipindi kigumu sana ilipata hali ya kuwa nzuri ya kiuchumi ukiangalia mwaka mmoja ambao ameweza kumaliza tunapaswa kuweza kuwapa kongole kwa zile juhudi ambazo wameweka ama tupasu kuweza kuwapa kongole kwa juhudi ambazo wameweka za kuhakikisha kwamba gharama ya maisha imeshuka um, so thank you now when you look at one year since the president took on the reins I can say that his inaugural speech was quite encouraging. He mentioned sectors that he's going to work on, uh, particularly cooperative SMEs, the healthcare center, particularly revamping NHIF and the likes, um, ensuring affordable housing. But um, sadly, I would say I cannot congratulate this current government as is, because the law society is part and parcel of the petitioners that were in court this morning, particularly on the finance bill. So there are challenges and the weight on the people is quite heavy. And so we ask ourselves, um, is the government weighing based on IMF requirements or looking at how can they jumpstart this economy? How can they ensure that there is access to credit to more people that even um, the, the driver or the Uber rider can be able to afford to take loans to take on Uber driving. You see more and more people are going into informal sectors to supplement their other formal work because you cannot afford the current cost of living. We're having situations where people would live on their own are now opening, sharing spaces so that they can um, have BNBs within their own living spaces. So this shows that the economy is not doing well. So how and would you rate the government's performance in um, terms of for cost myself, of living? Um, Unfortunately, I'd read um, 30 percent. So 30 percent, that's yeah. close to an E, also D minus. Let me bring in Diana Geshengu really fast there. And Diana, th they say there's a plan, at least when you talk about fertilizer, subsidized fertilizer, it's there. They're saying that eventually will lower the cost of living. Is, aren't you convinced that there is a plan in place and they just need a bit more time before you give your rating? Is there a plan? <laughs> was there ever a plan? Unfortunately, um, this government was able to articulate that there was a plan. But everything that has happened in the first year moves away from anybody who had trusted that there was a plan. Because what was projected around agriculture, around financial inclusion, around the, the plan was women 50-50. 
the cabinet studio has all men right now. They are struggling to get the women who will make it 50-50. Where is the plan? The plan was abstract. It has now remained, it is now vague. Maybe it's being recreated. There was no plan. Either that or the reality that they found within government was a huge shocker that then they set aside the plan. And I think it's time they acknowledged that and recreated a plan with all um, Kenyans um, afresh. That will be something that we would believe, yeah. but I'm not sure. Um, I'm actually waiting for Mzalendo to tell us where we are at, uh, where they, they, there seems to be hope. But from where I sit, the plan has been vacated. And your score would be a what? Um, in line with the new higher education guidelines, we, we, we would keep it at a D. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's cross over back to Ayub and get some answers from there. Ayub? Uh, thanks, Trevor. And this is the expert studio. I'm joined by Ndinde Nyoro. He is the lawmaker representing Kiharu constituency, who as well chairs the National Assembly's Budget Committee. He's joined by Dr. Joy Kiru, who is an economic expert from the University of Nairobi, and also Indirecto Murethi, who is the former governor, like Kipia County, and a member of the Azimio Lamoja One Kenya Coalition political party. I first come to you, Dr. Joy Kiru. 365 days later, does the reality match the pledge made by the government? Thank you so much for that question. Um, I am privileged because one year, almost one year ago, I sat in this same seat, in this same, in this same studio, and I told Kenyans, come on, people are asking for your vote. What do you, ask, what do you expect them to tell you? And I, I told Kenyans about a year ago, what you are seeing is persuasive rhetoric. Something to help to, with the objective of winning the vote. And I told Kenyans, what you are hearing, that is the main objective, to get into power, to get into office. And I told Kenyans, now, if you look at the indicators of what happens to whoever comes into this power, you can only uh, see how much hard work they have ahead of them. Like, for example, we were inheriting an economy whose debt was about 70% GDP. We were inheriting an economy whereby the global economic situation was not encouraging at all. We were seeing uh, oil uh, fuel shocks. We were seeing um, war, a war in Ukraine complicating the food situation. And we were seeing uh, already Kenya was undergoing through a drought, and the, and, and the sector of agriculture was already receding. That is, it, it was going down even before they took off power because of a drought and so many other challenges. And so we told Kenyans, uh, whatever you are hearing now, not the objective is to get into power. Okay. When they get into power, the job begins. Okay. Well noted, Dr. Uh, coming to you, Honorable Ndende Nyoro, you, you promised a lot, especially in wanting to change the Kenyan people's lives, the cost of living. That was your, the pillar of your campaigns. A year later, have you improved the lives of Kenyans and generally the cost of living in the country? Thank you very much, Ayu. I am a very proud Kenyan and also a proud leader because looking back for the last one year, we have been able to do a lot of heavy lifting in terms of the economy. Because even before you talk about the personal um, economies of people, the micro ones, they all generate from the macro perspective. And I can tell you, Ayub and all Kenyans have a right to know that we had a, a, a lot of heavy lifting to do in terms of putting our economy into shape, in terms of having the right uh, 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 infrastructure of the economy, in terms of having the right basis. And I can tell you, are you actually comparative to many other economies that we are in a place that we were a year ago? Some have already degenerated and descended. If you look at our neighbors without naming names, and I actually I can say them because it is important for us to base our arguments on facts. If you look at countries like Zambia, even our neighbors in Ethiopia, and several others in Africa, you can see that Kenya actually have made many leaps forward. And that has been based on deliberate decisions in terms of stabilizing our debt area around paying of interest rates. Because even before we talk about the plate, even before we talk about the microeconomy of individuals, the country needed to, to stabilize. 
coming to your question directly, the standard of life or the cost of living in terms of Kenyans mm -hmm. is hedged on inflation, is hedged on specific things. And specific, uh, specific things, number one, which is very important, is actually food. I am very proud that through deliberate policies, we were able to attack production, uh, uh, we were able to attack the issue of the cost of living on the side of production, and actually citing just one statistic, uh, Ayub, is that Kenya consumes around 46 million bags of maize. Mm -hmm. And on year on year, we produce around 40 million bags of maize. Every year, we have had a deficit of 6 million bags to 10 million bags. This year, out of the deliberate decision of incentivizing production, we are anticipating production of 60 million bags of maize in one season, not one year. That has a compounding effect in terms of even the plate. But also, let me put it this way, because many times we dwell on what is the cost of this, what is the price of this. Inflation as it is, is not just a factor of prices. It is also a factor of incomes. And I want to give you an example. If you go to our supermarkets to, uh, today to buy bread, and you go to a supermarket in the US or any OECD country okay. to buy the same bread, you find that the bread in those countries is many multiples of Kenya. But you do not accuse them of having inflation because there is a variation in price. Prices generally go up. That is why when I was in Nasari school, the price of Uga was very different from what it is now. What is of importance is that as the prices go up, okay. we also carry incomes of people together. And I can tell you, some of the discussions I'm listening from various studios, I wish we had time to take this studio today, for example, to the food baskets of our country. We talk to our farmers because a segment of majority of farmers are very happy. Why? Because if you look at the margins, they are going to enjoy around the production okay. of various commodities. It is way different. Thank you. So what am I saying, uh, Ayub? We have had a lot of successes, but there is a lot of work to do. All right. And we are up to the task. Okay. And we are doing it. Okay. And, and the, the, the work here revolves around how then do you improve the living standards of Kenyans before you go to Nderei to Mrethi. And when you talk about what you have done so far in the past uh, 365 days, then how do you talk to the Kenyan voter tonight who feels or is experiencing a squeezed household budget because of the cost of living crisis, a limited or a, a rather small in terms of his disposable income and the sky cost of basic commodities in the country who, who might see your submissions as rather not the reality on the ground in terms of what they are facing? Uh, I, as I have uh, clearly stated, it depends with, from, uh, on where you sit in terms of the economic spectrum. When you go at the production side, everyone in the primary production in Kenya is actually happy. Pro primary production and especially farmers. Farmers are happy in this country because they can actually look at their farms and they see money. That is number one. Okay. Number two, even as we talk about what is squeezed, and especially even my pay, uh, pay slip is squeezed, but to what end? It is squeezed to an end that, I, uh, that is palatable, okay. I can live with. Because we have to look at it in, in both dimensions. As we talk about the squeezed in, um, disposable okay. incomes in terms of taxation and especially pay, Thank you. it is important Ayub, to also look at what is it that the government is doing with these monies that we are squeezing some of the Kenyans. Okay. And Ayub, just to cite a few. Number one, I've talked about fertilizer. Briefly, okay. N number two, mm -hmm. I can talk about CBC. Okay. C now it looks like it has been there. But it needed a deliberate government thank you. to come and implement CBC. Okay, thank when you. we get time, we'll talk about the funding in our edu uh, tertiary education, the hustler fund, thank and you. many other deliverables right, that we'll be talking about. Okay, Honorable Ndeni, we have a vast array of other issues to talk about, including oh. fertilizer. Honorable Ndeni Tomorevi, from the opposition's perspective, what's your view of the past one year of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration? Well, I would have to say it's been a disastrous year because. The Kenyans are by and large worse off than where they were 12 months ago. Uh, on the cost of living, it is clear that uh, just about the, uh, the price of everything has gone up. Now, cost of food has gone up, and you would think that might make farmers happy. I'll give you an example. Onions, the price of onions is up 22%. The price of milk, 14%, and so on. 
beans are up 32%. So you might think the farmers are better off, but they are not because the price of electricity that farmers are using, the price of, of diesel that the farmers are using, electricity is up 63%. Uh, uh, diesel is up uh, 28%. Paraffin that we use in the homes is up 32%. So even though the farmers may be getting slightly more for what they produce, they are actually worse off because the cost of that production, uh, with the exception of this story of fertilizer, uh, the costs are up. If you look at transport fares from Gedorai here to town, yeah, just in July alone, the fare went up six, uh, 17%. So Kenyans are by and large worse off. If you look at uh, debt, in the management of the debt position. Okay. This government has borrowed more, and it is borrowing at a much higher rate. I give you one example. Last June, they borrowed in one week 213 billion shillings at the equivalent of 22.5%, right. which means you and I, as small businesses, when we go to our banks, we now have to pay 25 to 30% interest on our loans. So. Overall, okay. Kenyans are worse off, and I hope we get time to go into detail. Thank you. Of course, we'll get time to go into details on the array of areas that await our attention. We now cross over to the cabinet studio where Sam Getoku and Nimro Tabu are standing by. All right, thank you so much, Ayub. And let's just put things into perspective by looking at the numbers of how things have changed since September last year and today. 13th of September 2022, a day like today, a year ago, petrol was retailing at 159 shillings, 12 cents. Of course, this was after a subsidy had been uh, given by the administration then. But now, the following day, the price of petrol changed, and now it's retailing at 194 shillings, 68 cents in Nairobi. Diesel was retailing at 140 shillings in uh, September of last year. Now it is 179.67 cents. Kerosene was retailing at 127.94 cents. It's now 169 shillings 48 cents. If you have to focus on something else about the cost of living, this is what the government has done. It's, it uh, scrapped the subsidies, the failed subsidies that were at that time, and now there's something that has been introduced. The president says it is not a subsidy. It is a price stabilization which has been introduced. It is between 3 shillings 59 cents and 7 shillings 33 cents. Of course, 7 shillings being for petrol, it should have been retailing at about 202 shillings without that price stabilization. But if you have to look at um, uh, the foods that uh, Kenyans consume, bread was retailing at, uh, no, this is not the accurate figure, it was um, the, the bar of soap of 800, this should actually be sugar. Sugar was supposed to be 316 shillings last year. It is now between 420 shillings and 500 shillings. Some, some shops will find it at a higher price. If you had to talk about uh, maize flour, it was retailing at 200 shillings plus. It is now between 170 shillings and 200 shillings, depending on the shop that you buy. But this is the packet uh, unga. If you had to talk about something like uh, cooking oil, at that time it was 450 shillings per liter of cooking oil. It is now 340 shillings. Has, has been a decline. But along the way, there's a time that it had spiked, but now it's settling down and getting back to that point for uh, something like uh, um, this should be what? Bread. It was retailing at, at 55 shillings at that time. It is now retailing at 64 shillings. And of course, different prices for different commodities. But I want us now to subject this to the cabinet secretaries who are here in studio and just to introduce that uh, Nahumi Chawafula, the cabinet secretary for health, has now joined us. Good evening. And uh, we'll be talking to you, but let's begin with you, Cabinet Secretary Moses Kuria. You know, as far as the cost of living is concerned, because this was one of the biggest promises that was made by the campaign of William Ruto before he became president. If, in fact, the promise was that that would be one of the issues to be uh, focused on. There has been a, a bit of change, but not necessarily where people would want to see it, especially if you talk about the cost of fuel and cost of food and other commodities. What would be your response in terms of the action and what should Kenyans wait to see happening in the coming uh, months? I like this question, uh, uh, Sam, but I wish your figures are factual. As you know, you, you pride yourself that your TV is the most watched in the country. So don't forget there's somebody who is watching you from a supermarket. So be careful. When you what, what is the figure that I have a question no, about? Let, let's take uh, cooking oil, for example. Right. It's much lower than what you project there, and Kenyans know that. Yes, you've said correctly that you know, the price has come down, but it's not even to the level you have said. It is by 50% 
since we, we came to government. So our figure uh, is an estimate of 340. No, it's much lower than that. What is it's, your it's, it's much lower than that. It's in the region of 230, 240 shillings. 230 yeah. shillings a liter of... Yeah, a liter of edible oil. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there are some Kenyans who are watching you from, from a supermarket. So, you know, everyone can be entitled to their own opinion, but not everyone can be entitled to their own facts. Facts are universal. I want us to also look at the issue of sugar. Uh, to ask you, maybe before this program is over, make some few calls. I suggest you call some supermarkets here in Nairobi, up country, in the shops. So at the uh, moment, we're, right. we're giving a range so, of between 420 shillings to 500 <coughs> shillings plus for a two kilogram pack of a sugar. Two kilogram pack. What is the price according to you? Well, I'm just saying, let us reconfirm that. I know for sure that edible oil is much, much lower than that. But anyway, I digress. I'm just asking you, because I've seen you inciting Kenyans. No, no, no. It, I've seen you inciting okay. Kenyans with the panel. If indeed you question the figures you know, I've seen, you know, the, uh, let, me, let me just put it this way. It is because good for you to give us the, the problem with you, figure, and that is why you are strong. as me roast. That's why you are as me roast. That you is can, what you're talking no, about. No, Sam, let's, let's put it this way. You know, I, I laugh. You know, you never learn. You never learn. The same way you are falsifying facts last year with your as me is the same way you are falsifying it now. The same way you had skewed panels during that time is the same way you have skewed panels now. The same way you are using fake opinion polls that time that tell you that Azimio was winning is what I've seen in that panel now. Anyway, let's get back to the facts. Let's, let me start with fuel. Now, on the issue of fuel, we have something called PDL, Petroleum Development Levy. The purpose of this PDL is what we call making hay when the sun shines. That let me accumulate some money as a buffer so that when the global dynamics are not in my favor, then I can be able to use that to cushion the, the consumer. That money was deducted from the consumer. Where did you want it to go? The right thing is after you accumulate it, you tell them, Mr. Consumer, Mr. Motorist, Mr. Passenger, I have now accumulated so much money because you are the one who gave me this money. It is only right and fair that I give this money back to you. you know, so then you guys go all over saying it's a subsidy. It is not a subsidy. This money, we saved it from every liter of petrol to go to some kitty as a safeguard so that now uh, when the situation is not very favorable, we don't have our own crude oil we don't produce oil, then that goes back there. Number two, because of the situation in the U.S., whereby inflation at, in the U.S. is at, at the highest, you know, you look at the interest rate, 5% interest rate in the U.S. market is never heard of. The whole world is suffering because of the actions of the U.S. You know what they did during COVID? They printed money. You know what we are doing? We are all paying for that. You've had everyone. You've had President Ruto. You've had uh, Antonio Gutierrez, who is not a member of Kenya Kwanza, talk about this unfair, you know, you know, uh, practice by the U.S. and by the you know global north uh, that we in the south are suffering like that. So is this Antonio Gutierrez at one? So, so is this did, all those people who are talking about all did these? Did you know this during the campaigns? Sorry, say that again. Did you know this about the, uh, during the campaigns about what the U.S. had done? No, they had not done it that particular time. Since this year only, my friend, just go to the U.S. and look at the interest rate on what has happened in the interest rate. We've been talking about, I don't know where you guys have been, we've been talking about the unfair financial system in the world. Antonio Guterres was here. Japanese Prime Minister was here. We've talked about it all the time and saying, look, we, it is not fair to expect the Global South to continue paying for the unfair practices of the North. And all these things that you mentioned, the whole thing of a fair financial system in the world is coming here, as it is in Uganda, as it is in all these countries. But you know what? What worries me is that when I talk to the actual people, and I think Dean De Niro has mentioned this, when I talk about to the people who voted for us, overwhelmingly. How come they get these more than you guys who claim to be educated? Mm. How come these farmers, you know, I was in Transo here last week, how come these farmers get it? How come they are telling me, they are taking you know, selfies in their mixed plantations, the actual people who voted for us? But you know, because of snake oil salesmen in royal media and in, in all these other places, you know, you continue getting, you know, I have never seen, I've never seen people who are more consistent than royal media. Just 
consistently at getting it wrong. Siri, just hold on. We're still we're just starting the conversation, okay. and it would be important that we focus on facts. I have told you that the price of unga was 200 shillings plus September 2022. Today, it is a range of between 170 shillings to, two, to 200 shillings. Is that an Azimio figure, or is the reality in the market? But also, what do you explain to Kenyans? No, I, even I, if there's a bad harvest, the price of a packet of think, has not I, come I down. Think, I think some, yeah. because you're talking about facts, and facts are stubborn, you say it was 200 and? and shillings 20, plus, yes. 200 plus, it was 220. Yes. Two, two, two was 250. Add the subsidy, because that was after subsidy. No, no, that after was, the, that was after, after the subsidy has ex, had expired. No, that in was after the consumer Chime subsidy. Chime the subsidy yeah? had expired in August. No, let us uh, subsidy. Let us put a, a subsidy of like 20 shillings there. So the actual price, the real price, because it was still subsidy was coming from the pockets of Kenyans, was somewhere in the region of 270 shillings, down to 170. Was it, Before the harvest, no, no, was we it, have it, please. not. Put Let us talk about subsidy. the fact the subsidy had expired in August. I'm talking about the price 13th of September 2022. Granted, can you imagine it has fallen without the subsidy? Granted, it has fallen when we were not harvested. Granted, it has fallen when there has been, you know, the worst drought in the country. It has fallen. Don't you think we deserve a medal? Waziri, uh, allow me to chime in. Mwishimwa ngependa sana uchangie kwa sababu najua swala hili liko karibu sana na moyo wako. Manake, tunasikiza wengine wakizungumzia swala la uzalishaji chakula. Unatokea sehemu ya transoya ambapo ni sehemu moja ya uzalishaji wa chakula. Unapumsikia mwishimwa ndindi nyoro na wengine wanapuzungumzia magunia milioni sitini ambao natarajua ku kuvunwa iwe ni ya mahindi tupe taswira kamili ya transoya kwa sababu kuna wengine wanafisi kwamba baada ya kupata mbolea ya bei nafuu kuna watu waliongeza ikari za kupanda lakini hali si kama hivyo ilivyo tanzoya transoya watu wamekuwa wakipanda kadri ya uwezo wao jinsi ilivyo tupe hali halisi eh, kwanza ni changie hapo <coughs> kwa bei ya unga Na. Hii bei ya unga ambayo tunaongea juu yake ni ile unga ambayo iko kwenye packet, iko kwenye supermarket, iko Bilashan. kwenye miji. No. It is in the cities and in towns. No. If we look at the population of Kenyans who access packeted unga, I am confident to say it's a very small fraction compared to majority of the population that is in the up country. In the up, uh, at the up country, they siaga their unga, you know, gorogoro. I come from Transoya. Over the weekend, I was at home. A gorogoro of maize right now is retailing between 70 and 90 shillings. That 70 and 90 shillings gorogoro of maize, if you take it to the portion mill, you'll spend another 10 shillings to make it into unga. unga. That means at the end of the day, you have two kilos of unga at 100 shillings. So that is what it is right now for the larger people at uh, Mashinani. I am a farmer. I have farmed. And I can tell you for sure, this year, my harvest is not what I, I, I got last year. It is a bamba harvest. And I want to confirm, from majority of the people who are farming in Transoya, we have a bamba harvest this year. In fact... Una, unaweza kusema hiyo kwa sababu ya kuwa mbolea imeshuka ama kwa sababu gani ina, ina kuwa bamba? Mbolea imeshuka, um. na pia mungu ni muema, tulikuwa na mvua nzuri. Izo vitu mbili. Zimefanya mle, tukakuwa na harvest ya kutosha. Yeah. So, no. Mpangilio wa serikali wa mbolea na kuhahamisha wa kulima kwa mba kuna hii bei raisi ya mbolea. Iluafanya wengi ambao pia walikuwa hawajuhusishi na ukulima kujuhusisha. Sababu wengi waluacha ukulima kwa sababu ya bei ya mbolea na bei ya mambo mengine ambayo yanachangia katika ukulima. Kwa hivyo pia mpangilio wa serikali ulikuwa sabamba, ulikuwa umepangika na pia Mwenyezi Mungu akaweza kutupa mvua na ndio sasa tuko. Je, ina maana kwamba tutaona kwamba kutakuwa na mavuno ama kulikuwa na upandaji katika sehemu ambazo kawaida huwa hawapandi mahindi? Ya kuna Jok, sehemu jokat... ambao kuna sehemu ambako watu walikuwa hawapandi kwa sababu ya gharama ya bidhaa ambazo zinahusika na, na ukulima. Lakini na hasa hasa kabisa bei ya, mbo, ya mbolea iliwafanya wengi ambao wana ardhi lakini hawakuweza kutumia ardhi hiyo viwavyo kwa sababu hawakuwa na uwezo wa kuweza kununua bei ya mbolea wakati huo elfu saba, na sasa wakati liposhuka elfu tatu, miatano, wengi wakajihusisha na ukulima All right, of course we'll wait to, to see the ultimate harvest and weigh against uh, what has been done before but Waziri Chelugwe talk to me about because uh, Waziri Nahumiche here says that um, <coughs> 
the portion or proportion of Kenyans that buy unga at supermarkets are very minimal. Mm. But they are Kenyans, isn't yes, it? Right. It's true. If you look at the cost of production of uh, with, uh, I mean, maize flour, it is not just about the raw material. There has to be <coughs> the input costs. There has to be the production cost in terms of the cost of energy. Mm. It has gone up. If you look at the field that we are talking about, transportation has gone up. So really, this question has not been answered mm. by the government. And if it has been answered, not as far as it had been promised. Mm. Uh, thank you, Sam. Uh, when you talk of cost of living, you look at um, what do we, uh, what do Kenyans require for to sustain their livelihood? One of one of the biggest uh, uh, factor in this cost of living is food, cost of food, and food. You talk of what is our stable food, uh, as you, as she says, is maize, ugali. Majority of our homes are taking ugali. Some of them <coughs> taking mudokoi. Some of them taking uh, ideri. All these are uh, pro uh, food products from maize. Mm -hmm. Now, government uh, at the onset identified this as a key challenge facing mm -hmm. many Kenyans facing this government. And therefore, the intervention was not on subsidizing consumption but subsidizing production. Mm -hmm. So that, imp that effort, what was done through KNTC, that was done by K National Cereals and Produce Board, registration of farmers, I participated actively through the cooperative movement to register farmers. Today we are five million farmers who are engaged in production of maize and other products. Right. So as we speak today, I believe if you look at the statistics, by the way, even though many Kenyans are making a lot of, uh, I've, I've heard them on TV, making noise about the cost of living. But when you look at the statistics, Kenya is 46.6% lower in, than UK in terms of cost of living mm -hmm. and 54% lower in cost of living than the US compared to US. So what do we need to do? Mm -hmm. As a government, we need to invest in production. The more we increase supply, the lesser the economies of scale in production if we have many farmers who are supported. My ministry will be working with the Minister of Agriculture in ensuring that extension services, aggregation of farmers through cooperatives so that we increase production. And hence, when the supply is high and uh, demand is lower, the cost definitely, the market forces will fix a better price. Mm -hmm. And that is how we're going to reduce the cost of living. Okay. 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 Uh, na serikali ya Saudi Arabia uh, na milki ya Kiarabu kwamba sasa tunanunua mafuta kwa kutumia sarafu ya Kenya ambayo ni Kenyan currency akasema mwenyewe na kutangaza kwamba kwa muda fulani bei ya mafuta itakuwa inapungua lakini sivyo na kuna wale wanaokutazama kwa sasa hivi una yapi mengine ya kuwapa uh, kutoka kwa serikali ambayo itawatia moyo kwamba bei itashuka hivi karibuni au la kwanza kabla ni, ni gire mafuta ya petroli na naamini na, 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 na ya kwamba unaongea mambo ya mafuta ya petroli na. kwanza niko nimepata risala mbili moja ni kutoka jamaa ya Koroiro amesema kama mnaweza kupika eh, pale Roiro mafuta ya kupikia akasema ni 210 eh, amenitumia risala hiyo ni moja, moja. kuna jamaa anaitwa Martin Kinyita ako msahemu pale kwangu nyumbani Katundu na amesema kwa eh, amenunua unga leo huko ni shilingi 150. So tuamini ya kwamba hao ni wa Kenya pia na pia wana, sababu wanatazama wana, wana Iruninga. Kwa hivyo kuna wale walisikiza rais wakati huo lakini kuna wale ambao wanasikiza citizen leo. Na unajua lazima tuanze wa leo kabla kurudi hapo hapo nyuma. Niseme hivi mambo ya mambo ya mafuta. Ile mpango tuko nao wa kununua uh, mafuta kwa shilingi sio kwa sio kwa US dollar sio kwa US dollar sana sana wacha mambo ya bei kwa sababu bei inaweza kupandishwa na sababu tofauti kuna bei zinaweza kupanda kwa sababu ya 
crude oil ile ya dunia vile inaenda na tumetazama crude oil vile inaenda bado hatujaanza kuwa na mavuta yetu lakini kwa kila mwezi ukiangalia ile US dollars dola ya kimarekani ambao sisi tunaweka tukikojea mambo ya kuwe bora zaidi ni kuambia kwa kwamba nimro na mimi ni mtu wa uchumi nimesomea mambo ya uchumi kama sio hili jambo hata hiyo shilingi tunasema imedhoofika kama sio hilo jambo ingekuwa imedhoofika zaidi kwa hivyo kuna upande wa bei upande moja lakini pia kuna ule upande wa sisi kutotumia dola yetu kila siku. Alikwambia ni mrod. Kuna mmoja mm. ambaye aliwasikiza katika kampeni yenu. Mkieleza bayana kila katika safari ya kampeni kwamba tutakapoingia tunajua tatizo liko wapi tutashukisha bei ya mafuta. Leo hii hiyo suluhu iko au haiko? Iko kwa sababu kama tukifanya hiyo mipkakati my friend. Waje nikwambie ukweli. Kama wale jamaa wazimio wangeingia na wafuate sera za ile serikali nyingine hii serikali ingekuwa imeporomoka kwa mwezi wa nne. Usikie hiyo. Ni miujiza vile tumeshika uchumi ambao ilikuwa taabani kabisa iko katika ICU. Sasa hii unaweza kusema haijashuka. Lakini nikwambie baina bayana kama wakifuata sera za serikali ile nyingine kwa wakati huu uchumi ingekuwa umeporomoka kabisa. Tukiona ya kwamba uchumi yetu umejiza titi licha ya kwamba duniani mzima bei ya crude oil imeenda juu licha ya kwamba vita ya Ukraine tulikuwa tunakadiria kwa wakati uta kwa maisha haijaisha licha ya kwamba uchumi wa kimarekani unaendelea kudhoofisha nchi mingi mpaka China mpaka Europe bado wana, wana wako na hii shida ya uchumi ya Amerika na ile sera inachukuliwa na serikali ya kimarekani tuseme ni miujiza na tushukuru Mungu lakini ya maana ya kwamba ile jambo inanifurisha zaidi inapea roho yangu furaha wale watu walichagua wanajua ulikuwa liko kuliko waziri that's fine for you to say that but i remember the president the presidential debate indicating that there were 15 taxes and levies and some of them needed to be scrapped we have come to the finance act and you know what happened so in fact the vat was raised from 8% to 16% yes there are two levies that were reduced but it's not two 23 There were two levies 23 taxes the ones that 23 taxes were reduced was it i know what i'm but i know in, it, in royal about, media eyes no, the no. three was not visible it was, was 23 it, was not it, just listen to the question it will give you answer there were there are levies and taxes on fuel two were reduced import declaration levy and another one the vat was increased by 100% from 8% to 16% that was not a promise how do you account for that because wakati huo hawako wamefungua they are not open the sieves at treasury and when we went there and we looked at what was there it was horrible it was actually horrifying by the time it was 8% they are not open the treasury which they rooted in the last two weeks of power do you know how much rooting happened in two weeks and we have got record and we've said publicly Sorry, so, go and ask those who rooted. So, go and ask who looking at these people. So, how much did you root in two weeks? You know, it was like a scotch at the policy. How do you expect us to, on one hand, you've rooted the treasury. On the other hand, you've left us with debts. Unbelievable debts. Oh, and they know what they were saying because they knew what they had done. They had said, give these people until December. This government will collapse. Because they knew what they had done. So we thank God. And we thank our Kenyans for being patient with us. That despite the fact that we found a poison pill, that because they had set up conditions that could have led to the collapse of this economy, we were able with our Kenyans. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, people who we went to explain to them, Kenyans understand this institution. This is how they found them to be. By the way, you know Kenyans are amazing people because they have been very patient with us, and they know. They know because we have not made errors on fundamentals. You know there is errors on the contemporary facts and there are errors on fundamentals. Mm -hmm. We scrapped subsidies on consumer pro on, at the consumer level. We did subsidies on productions on fertilizer. We have done uh, a stabilization of the, all the macroeconomic you know indicators. We are saying that maybe today is not as good as we would have wanted it to be but because we didn't mess up with the fundamentals as we build the curve and as the global economy improves i know kenyans know that we've got a better tomorrow
Asante Mheshimiwa. Mheshimiwa nakumita na kurudisha pale pale kwenye gharama ya maisha na hasa hususan upanzi wa mahindi. Mnapozungumzia bumper harvest. Mheshimiwa amezungumzia lakini hakuliweka bayana swala la gharama ya mafuta. Kufikia kesho Epra huenda ikatangaza bei tofauti ya mafuta. Nikiwa itakuwa juu basi huoni kwamba hata kukiwa na bumper harvest tutarudi pale pale katika hali ya chochole kwa sababu gani? kila kitu kinapanda kulingana na gharama ya mafuta. Ina maana kwa wale wanaonunua mahindi kuyasafirisha mahali fulani yale mafuta ya lori yatapanda. Kwa wale wasagaji ambao wanatumia dizeli mitambo ya kusaga watapandisha bei zaidi ya unga. Hilo litakuwa vipi kwa serikali eh, ya Kenya kwanza? Asante, kwanza eh, vile mwanzangu amesema kuna factors mingi ambazo zina influence bei ya mafuta. Na vile amesema ya kwamba tulikuwa tume promise ya kwamba tutakuja tuta, tuta kuangalia hizo bei lakini hizi factors external factors they have continued to persist one of them is the Ukraine and Russia war it has continued to persist the, the, the economy of the US has continued to persist so regardless of what else we do and these are things that are controlling the cost of fuel so there's so much that we can do to change that but if you find a leaking bucket you first have to fix the holes before then you start uh, putting some new water into that leaking bucket. So this economy, we found it leaking. So we have spent quite some time to seal the holes of leakage. That after we are done with sealing the holes of leakage, then we can start moving forward and putting in clean water. In terms of uh, harvest, one thing that I know that we are doing, and I think we are expecting the next few days, my colleagues will uh, correct me, is that we are getting uh, seed dryers. So that and improve on storage of the harvest. What normally happens, and the people you're talking about with the trucks, are the people who are middlemen, who want to go brokers. and the, brokers, who want to go and influence the price of the harvest at this moment. But the government has made plans. We are getting seed dryers. Uh, we are also getting um, storage facilities right. so that people can aggregate their harvest and okay. keep it up to that time that then it can be used. Okay. Yes, well, Waziri, thank you for that. Of course, uh, we are bringing you the figures as we know them from our research. CS Korea has these figures from Roiro <laughs> and others. Let's go to Eldred to listen to John Wanyama to give us the real figures live from Eldred in a supermarket. Wanyama. Thank you, thank you very much. We are at Naiva Supermarket, uh, Sam, and clearly, as we have seen here, the prices of different uh, types of cooking oil here, like this one, Ufuta, we are they are selling at Naivas at 347. If you come here, this is Salit oil, cooking oil, this is going, going at uh, 325 shillings. And here, Golden Fry, it's going at 355 shillings. Just to sample out quickly, there's here, we have here, top fry which is going at 307 clearly an indicator that really the cooking oil has gone up in their prices since the maybe in the few years or few months ago the those who are, whom we have talked to they are saying it has gone up to maybe three times of what they used to buy that is what we have found here at naiva supermarket sam Okay, all, all, all right. Thank you so much, uh, John Wanyama. I, I see Waziri Nakumicha. You, yes. you, you are perturbed by the figure you're saying on the screen. You have it on your board. That is that 450, in September 2022. It was 450. Yes. Right now, the figures that he's reading, he actually, the, the list that he has talked about is 307. And that's five liters. No, Waziri, he has given a range. There are different brands. Some yes. are 347, others yes. are 325. Yes. We've given there an estimate. A liter or per of five liters? Per liter, one liter. Yes. In September 2022, a liter of 340 shillings. Totally. We will be patient from. with you. And just go, to, average, just go now to Ruiro. That's not an Go to Ruiro. Yes. Send a crew there. And we are here for two hours. <laughs> What's the hurry for? <laughs> See, we are here for two hours. <laughs> See, where the Ruiro? Okay. So, I'm a Why should you go to Ruiro? <laughs> there is a great place. I'm a Wendy. I'm a Tutok Kwanza to Kuchukwe Obi. Sam, I want to address an issue on the fact that that influence the crude oil prices. I think, as Kenyans, we agonize so much on how to fix these uh, prices. One, we are not producers of oil and petroleum. We import this commodity. And just like any other commodity, faces many, many uh, factors. And uh, there is import, there are insurances, there are logistical costs that determine the cost of oil. One of the 
leading and a very important fundamental factor in determining the prices is actually the current supply and also the output in the recent past. The second one is OPEC. That is Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Mm -hmm. They always supply this commodity through quotas. So any time that we import this oil, this has to come into play. Okay. Then we also have the future supply and reserves, which is also a consideration in determination of price and the demand from major countries. Remember, our consumption is relative to other major countries. And finally, the political events and crisis. As we speak today, we have an issue, a crisis in, the, in, the, in Europe, Russia and uh, Ukraine. All these have contributed. They have affected the routes, the shipping routes of oil across the world. The price of wheat, we import our chapati, unga, largely coming, comes from Ukraine and Russia. So all these have contributed. So as we struggle to fix this problem as a country, as a people, as an administration, let us remember we operate in a global village and we are all subject to all these factors. So it is good to beat ourselves, but also understand and appreciate okay. where the environment that we operate in. Mm. I, I have a question. I have yes. got Masi Ruseno, my friend from Kakamega. Uh -huh. Would you allow me to call her so that she tells us about yeah. the edible oil in Kakamega? No, what, what, what you can do, you can no, get it. Because okay, you know, Masi Ruseno. Waziri, please. You can a, get the information. A in Kakamega. Waziri. There. Waziri, no, please. If you allow me just to set it, because no, we don't have my studio no, person. No, we won't do that on set. No, no, we can, I want, I am going to do it. Waziri, Waziri because you know, Masi is there in Kakamega. She's telling me, what? she cannot allow you I ag oh, that guy was it? I do not what, doubt what you. Was it? Was it? Was it? Was it? Please, let us just be orderly. Was it? Was it? Okay. Was it? You can call Marcel Luceno. We don't. We don't doubt you. By the way, that you have information, we'd be glad to hear hear from you. But in the meantime, we're going to cross over to uh, Victoria, who has the opinion pollers on what they have to say about what they found. Kenyans are saying about the cost of living, this very hot issue here in studio. That's right, Sam, a hot issue indeed. Uh, we heard the CS Courier saying the figures were not credible. The pollsters are here to give immediate feedback to that. Angela, in your poll, it showed 89% of at least the respondents felt the high cost of living was the reason why the country was going in the wrong direction. How do we dig deeper into those numbers? Why the cost of living now? Um, Thank you, Victoria. Uh, we have asked the question uh, over you know, the last couple of months just to understand, to get contextualized what Kenyans mean by high cost of living. Uh, the first thing that has been mentioned is you know, basic essentials, the ones that have been discussed at great length in the various studios. So food, um, shelter, housing, uh, and other necessities like food. Generally, uh, in essence, when you talk to Kenyans, and one of the questions we normally discuss in our focus group interviews, is how much can a thousand shillings buy you today vis-a-vis -vis what it could buy you two or a year ago, which then links to inflation. And we would be fooling ourselves to say that the 1,000 shilling today can buy you the same as you'd buy before. And I saw someone in the studio earlier giving an interview to a um, gentleman who was in a supermarket who said that he had a small paper bag. And he said, can you imagine I have actually spent 6,000? And this is all I'm carrying. So that is really what Kenyans are talking about. The other thing that obviously is critical when the you know, Kenyans talk about cost of living is essential services, the cost of health care, which is you know, affordable, and I see the CS is there, quality health care is critical for all Kenyans. Uh, is that the case right now? Could it be better? What are the comparative costs? But it's, in essence, it behooves on us to say to, to you know, our policy makers that the citizenry feels that that cost is, is, is hinging on them uncomfortably. Um, education, you yourselves have reported kids being <laughs> sent back home from public schools right. just when schools open because they had to, due to lack of capitation, they had to actually fork out fees that hitherto they were not doing. So that then is one of the reasons why they say the costs are higher. Transport, I think, was mentioned by somebody else 
you know, in one of the studios in terms of just the cost of, I think it was Sam actually, um, but then the cost of energy. How much does a thousand shilling token give you today, accrue you today, vis-a-vis -vis what it was accruing you last year? I will tell you that a thousand shillings used to accrue 64 units, and today it accrues about 34. Is that high cost? Yes. These are the things that people are talking about. And indeed, um, I heard <coughs> some of our you know, focus group respondents saying, when they got their paycheck this time, especially those who are, you know, formally employed, and they looked at the tax, yeah. uh, uh, they joked and said, you know, it is so high that you have to uh, give away 34% of your salary thereof, yeah. uh, and then you have to give 10% of your gross as tithe. To God. Right. To God. Let me bring Tom in <laughs> really quickly here, because an interesting, you did a similar poll back in June basically asking Kenyans whether they felt the country was going in the wrong direction. There's a decline from how they felt in June, or rather July, to September. What informed that shift? What was happening? Um, that is, uh, uh, compared to June, the, the most recent survey, <coughs> correct, sure, I think a, uh, a decline in those thinking the country was going in the wrong direction mm -hmm. by nearly 20%, mm -hmm. which means an improvement. Right. I don't have the other figure. Well, I think there are several factors that were involved. <clears throat> Excuse me. One is, I think um, recently, in the last month at least, there's been largely an absence of demonstrations, uh, protests, the response of the police, and so on. Um, we saw in an earlier clip uh, the deaths that have been attributed to police violence and so on, one factor. I think also that survey that was done at the end of June, although I can't prove this, um, the data collection ended on the last day of the month, one day before the new Finance Act was supposed to take effect. And I think especially with regard to the housing levy, most Kenyans were thinking, and I have the data, but I don't have time to look it up, um, far more Kenyans were expecting to be subjected to that 1.5% than actually turned out to be the case. Um, yeah. So that, I think there's been a kind of a calming effect, mm. um, even if the case, certain aspects of the Finance Act are in court, as we saw um, today. Also, on the other side of the demonstrations, the reconciliation talks have taken, taken off. Mm -hmm. So I think these other factors help to, oh, and also perhaps, again, I can't prove it, but the very, very positive publicity that the president got last week at the climate conference, mm -hmm. just before we started our interviews. Now, we didn't ask people, are you aware of a climate conference? How do you evaluate the president's performance for those who are aware? So we didn't track that. Um, but I think those are the, some of the factors that led to the, um, the more positive estimation of the country's direction. I, there are several other things I could add later, but just right. one I'd like to add now. We had a discussion a few moments ago about how much of the food that Kenyans eat actually comes from shops as opposed to shambas, exactly. whether their own or relatives or whatever. And we did ask this question in June. We found that only 29% of all of Kenyans say that all of their food, um, um, or most of it, um, comes from a shamba. Mm -hmm. Only 24% said mm -hmm. none of it comes from a shamba. So I think the point that was made by one of the CSs CS is that when here. we're looking at, I'm not saying that the price of unga in the shops is not important, um, and we have the figures which obviously show that right. in urban, the urban population is much more dependent on shop, on bought right. uh, staple of, of unga than people in rural areas, but yeah. it is definitely a mixture, and that was even in the aftermath of this long drought. Okay. So Let me people are bring... complaining about um, basic commodities, yeah. we have to dig deeper and find out what proportion of their table food is actually coming from shops versus shambas. I'll bring Caroline in a bit later on on that issue of what the government has prioritized in terms of promises, because we've heard a lot about the economy being on the back foot, the need to be in recovery over the last year. So I'll come back to you, but let's quickly cross over to uh, Kibra, where Chamtai Goin and Waiweru are standing by with the conversation there. 
Thank you, Vicky. It doesn't get any better than this when those in authority are checked by those who are those who put them there. And right now in Kibra, we are with people who have been following the discussions in studio, and they want to. Uh, we want to check whether what is being said by those in power is actually what is happening at the ground. And I'm joining with them. With uh, some of them are joining me here. Excuse me, sir. Karibu sana. Mweshimi wa viongozi ambao wako studio, tukiongozo na mawaziri, wamesema ya kwamba bei ya vitu imeshuka. Hapa kibra, bei ya vitu iko chini ama hali kufika? Tanisame kwa kwa bei ya vitu badi ngali kwa juu saidi. Na laku nishangaza ni hili. So lile ni uwa na juuliza ni kulikuwa na bilateral agreement katikati ya mataifa ya kiarabu na serikali ya Kenya kuhusu nunuzi wa mafuta na tuliambiwa ti shilingi ya Kenya itaku, itashuka itakuwa chini ya shilingi 120 lakini leo imepita imefika 150 so lile najiuliza jamani eh, ma, yale masikizano ilikuwa namna gani number two, inafaa kuna, kuna economic growth and economic development ambapo serikali ya nchi ingehakikisha kuna ile economic development alafu ndio tuambie watu walipo ushuru ingekuwa bora sana ndio ningesema tu Asante going what is happening on your end uh, Well in studio we have um Cabinet Secretary for Cooperatives, Simon Chelugui. And one of the issues you expect him to talk about, of course, is the Hustler Fund. And here are a number of young people that are here. Ye, unafahamu mkopo huo ama hazina yu mkopo ya Hustler Fund, umenufaika na ayo, ama mauni yako ni yapi? Mi, kwa kusema tu, sijanufaika kwa sababu tukienda kuklaim yu mambo ya Hustler Fund, hizo zingine, Unaambiwa ujakuwa qualified ujakuwa qualified nani ujakuwa qualified au ujakuwa qualified kuna hizi documents zenye una zingine zenye unaitishwa sasa mtu anachoka kurudi rudi huko unaambiwa lazima uende utafute hii ndio urudi na utapata vitu zingine wanakuitisha mwenye yako kwa ofisi anakuambia rudi tu rudi ukiru. lakini mkopo huo si kwenda kwa ofisi sababu unaipokea kwa simu kwa hivyo labda kidogo uh, hiyo pia ni changamoto kwa waziri wa uh, mambo ya cooperatives kuwa labda kuna vijana ambao hawajaweza hawajaweza kupata information kikamilifu kuhusu uh, mkopo huo hasla fana jinsi wanaweza pokea kwa hivyo pia ni changamoto kwa serikali uh, kidogo pia tusikize kwa kijana wengine uh, kutoka hapa eneo la Kibra labda tu leze um, mwaka moja ya uongozi wa Kenya kwanza maoni yako ni yapi eh, kwa majina naitwa Hassan Abdul Kadir Salim mkazi wa Makina kwa kusema ukweli kwa kusema ukweli hakuna kitu mimi nimeona serikali imefanya kwa sababu wakati rais anaingia kwa kwa usukani alitupea mambo kama saba vijana mtapata kazi wa mama wa mboga mtainuliwa sitaingia kwa mambo ya judiciary sitaingia kwa mambo ya mawaziri wafanye bila wanataka nitafuata katiba ukiona CAS wamekuwa 50 hiyo ni against katiba ukiona vijana wengi kwanza wa boda boda walikoko na hope walipewa hope mpaka mtu anaona rais akiingia hivi dunia imeokoka ime, lakini imekuwa tabu ni mingi hata kushinda wakati wa uhuru kinyata zamani wakati wa kibaki na wakati wa uhuru kinyata kulikuwa na kitu inaitwa subsidies mambo ikiwa ngumu serikali inatoa nusu na ingine kwa ile ushuru yetu nusu mambo inakuwa rahisi petrol wakati uhuru alitoka ilikuwa ni 159 sasa inaingia 200 maisha juu chini iko juu sana na inatuumiza Asante sana. Na kabla waweru I hand over to you labda kidogo tusikize kutoka another gentleman from here. Uh, there are a number of issues that have been discussed by the cabinet secretaries that are in studio and we've seen um, that they have talked about the cost of living prices have gone down. Um, as a Kenyan and as a possibly tax paying Kenyan, um, one year later what do you feel about the fifth administration's uh, term in office? Oh, excuse my my name is George Ambunya. Uh, resident here in Kibra. Uh, I think the, 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 the it's upside down. It's upside down, according to me, because 
ukiangalia the cost of living the cost of living venye iko kulingana na financial finance act ambayo iliongeza uh, petroleum product from 8% to 16% iliongeza gharama ya maisha pia katika hapo hiyo financial act kuna house levy that's 1% ambapo pia ina 1% percent. 1.5% yes a bigger burden yes you also imeongeza imeongeza pia imeongeza pia gharama kwa sababu unapata mwajiri analipa anakatwa pesa ya, ya, ya nyumba pia mfanyekazi anakatwa pesa ya nyumba na ile hali mwajiri aguji kulala kwa hiyo nyumba yako ambayo serikali ina claim kwamba inakujengea so unaona hapo ni pesa ambazo hazijui zinaenda wapi so hiyo pia e, kumekuwa na hiyo hiyo mambo ya affordable housing hiyo mambo ya affordable housing hizo nyumba unapata ni 3 million Trimi, lakini unakuambia 10%. Hiyo 10% unapata kama hapa Kibra watu wengi wanalipa nyumba 35 3500. So vile mtu atapata hiyo 300,000 10% aenda ingio kwa nyumba affordable housing. Unapata pia is also a pipe dream. So there is nothing like that. Alafu pia kuna mambo ya corruption. Yes. Ya fighting corruption. Asante. Asante. Ya huduma namba. Ya huduma namba zipo. wenzetu pia waka, wachangia mswa. Another another thing when buy na kula 1 billion. So na priority was to funds. Asante sir, thank you very much. Awaweru labda kidogo kabla turejee studio. Um back to you on the other side. Nina mwenzangu hapa Shila kwa dakika moja tu Shila. Unaniambia kwamba umekuwa ukifuatilia sekta ya kilimo. Je, unaweza sema ni mambo yepi yametokea ya ambayo yamekuwa ya, ya manufaa zaidi hasa kwa wanaoishi mjini mkuu? Kwa majina, kwa majina anaitwa Sheila Kihima. Uh, ni kiongozi katika mrengo wa Kenya kwanza. Nitasema hivi. Tumekuwa tukiangazia maneno ya uh, cost of living imekuwa juu. Yes, tujakataa. Wakati mheshimiwa William Samuel Ruto alichukua uongozi maisha ilikuwa juu. Lakini wakati aliingia, alipromise ku revive sekta ya agriculture. Akijua akirevive sekta ya agriculture tutapata chakula vitu zitashuka. Yeye ndio kiongozi wa kwanza ama president wa kwanza kushukisha mambo ya mbolea. Yeye ndio kiongozi wa kwanza ama president wa kwanza kuangazia zile viwanda ambazo zilikuwa zimeanguka kama Mumia Sugar Company. Kwa hivyo as we speak alisema atashukisha bei ya unga na right now kutumeanza kuona katika eh, maduka zetu unga imefika 150 congratulations mheshimiwa asante sana nyingine ndio ndio inchi ikuwe stable ama economy ikuwe stable lazima security issues ihandaliwe vizuri regime ya Kenya kwanza imekuwa ikihandle mambo ya security through mheshimiwa Kindiki na hatujakuwa na malumbano na tumeona tuko na amani health sector kemsa ilikuwa no go zone lakini tangu mheshimiwa William Samoei Ruto aingie alileta kifagio madam wetu susa nani na humiza heko kwake amefagia kemsa na saizi tunapata madawa katika hospitali zetu. Asanteni sana. Thank you so much. That is what we are all about here. Listening to what Mwananchi is saying and linking it up with what is happening in our studio and we are about to hand it over to someone who is doing exactly what we are doing here in Kibra and we are joining Jail and Lincoln. What is happening on your end, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, thank you very much. Right here at Charter Hall, the debate is still hot on how to put food on the table, the price of unga, the price of cooking oil. How much does it cost for the local Mwananchi to put food on the table? And Tabu was just discussing with us how it has been easy or difficult for him. Tabu. Oh, thank you. My name is Atabu Charles, Chairman Bungala Zalendo. Uh, the cost of living is very high, that is a fact, and our, uh, it is well proven by the supermarket cost of products. Uh, what we, are, we need to <coughs> focus on is that uh, the government has failed us in one way. There is the difference between the government services and also the promises. The promises, political promises, are there which have not been pro, uh, fulfilled. And these are the repercussions that we are now facing. The cost of living has come up as a result of increase 
on fuel, electricity, among other factors. And we have communi been communicating to our government in various occasions, but they are not good listeners. The only thing is that they, they like lamentation. We want services right from the high, high office, that is the president office, to the lower offices. Secondly, the cost of living cannot be factored only on the aspect of fertilizer because they are, their fertilizer factor has been a big debate on them. That is the cost of living. No, there are so many elements that are in. That's why this country is in economical limbo as a result of failure for them to listen. One, we need to involve professionals in our services, government services, especially the CS. Because we have come to realize now people are trading. We are not getting the services. These people are now trading in the government. Instead of getting those services on the ground and also the factor that can improve the common monarchy to get a coin in the pocket, look at the recruitment. They are done selectively and secretively. Look at the aspect that the way they are offering as a way of telling the Kenya citizen, this is what you have done. They are telling us lies. Failing to understand we are also educated and learned and we are also examining everything and we are doing research appertaining to each and every state agency and their performance. So I would like to tell my president that be a good listener but talk less. Bila shaka kama anavyosema pale serikali iwe ya kusikiliza zaidi na sio kuzungumza zaidi. Tumesikia mjadala mkali sana pale uh, katika ule kumbe ambao mawaziri wapo pale wakizungumzia kuhusiana na bei za bidhaa. Uh, kwamba bei za bidhaa zimeshuka kinyume na kile ambacho uh, labda wengine wanakifahamu uh, lakini hapa ni tutakuwa ni vizuri tupate hisia za moja kwa moja mwananchi apate kutuelezea. Kile serikali nasema kwamba maisha ni afadhali kidogo ikilinganishwa na miaka hapo awali wahisi namna gani ndio ukweli ama mfuko una tatizo kidogo asante uh, sana kwa majina naitwa Kizito Uma mimi ndio speaker wa bunge wa Zalendo Kenya nashukuru sana kwa hiyo swali ambayo umeuliza mimi kwa sababu hata sisi kama wabunge wa Zalendo tunajaribu kuulizua sana kama wanafikiria sisi ndio wabunge ambao walichaguliwa na, na wananchi kusema ukweli maisha imebana watu kwa kupitia kutoka huko ma, masinani mpaka hadi mijini Watu wana mashida ya kubeba school fees ni kogali, stima bila umesema, manyumba ya kulipa, usafiri kwa sababu ya mafuta ambayo tunayotumia katika manyumba zetu na pia katika njia nyingi ambayo tunayotaka. Hivi na viosema kwamba, nimeona waziri wa biashara akijibu nilikuwa nafikiria anaulizwa ana swali ambayo anaweza pia kutueleza hali hivi inavyoendelea lakini sikuridhika na, na na jibu lake kwa sababu ikiwa kweli tutakuwa tunaambiwa tu ni subsidy ya, ya mbolea mbolea ndio ni sawa serikali ilifanya vizuri ikapeana lakini sasa sio sababu ya maisha ambayo tunayopitia hivi sasa maisha imetubana kwa sababu nyingi ambaye hasa watu ambao uko mjini wanaumia sana kwa sababu misara ya makampuni ambayo tunayoona hapa ni midogo sana. Jambo lingine nashindwa vile waziri wa biashara vile anataka kujibu maswali ambayo inafanya na nimeona makampuni kubwa kama Hilton zimefunga Intercontinental Hotels zimefunga sijui nyingi ambayo zinafunga na hizo ndio zinaleta dola dola ndio imetuletea shida katika njia yetu ya Kenya tafadhali president kama una waziri ambayo wanaoshughulika kukusaidia kazi uwaambie wafanye kazi kwa sababu maisha ambayo tunayopitia ni magumu sana asante sana kwa kunisikiza hapa na bila shaka tupata hisia hapa kwa mwenzangu hapa alafu tuone uh, wahisi namna gani serikali inaposema kwamba mambo ni mazuri kulingana nawe wafanya kazi gani na hali kwa vipi kimfuko uh, to tell you the truth uh, the, pres the, the, the present lifestyle of a Kenyan has gone down totally down down first i would like to talk about when uh, the president was, when when we had a, a debut pre debut president debate that uh, debate between uh, Mother Karua and uh, Kashagwa. He was talking about the issue about state capture, capture, state capture, state capture. So he, has, he came, in fact, even to define the state capture as if it's the present state that we are, are in. When you talk about now things like judiciary, judiciary has been captured by the state. When you talk about uh, parliamentary system, this is legislative, has been captured also by the state. So there's a lot of 
not transparent in the government, the executive. The executive, the executive is using this, all the state, state this, the other, the other state arms to multiply, manipulate the whole country. First, you can look at, uh, you can look at uh, when the when, you, when the judges rule against the government's decision, you find that he is either transferred or. He's, uh, he's either demoted in those case, cases. Like you can look about the issue about uh, this uh, financial bill. You look at uh, Justice Majanji, what he did, he has been transferred to Lamu. And that's not what called the, the, there's no transparency in the government. So the president who can transfer the government makes us look as if we are still in state, state capture. There's a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of corruption. The corruption case, you find that those, those places that where the, where the corrupt All right, thank, thank you. you very much. Those are some of the thoughts that are coming up at the Charter Hall at the CBD in Nairobi. And uh, from us here, my name is Jay Leta and my colleague, uh, Lincoln Jogu. Koko Trevor, uh, studio. Na mshukran sana tunazidi kuendeleza mjadala na kumbuka kwamba tupo katika ukumbi ule wa shareholders na ukiangalia swala zima la gharama ya maisha Trevor uh -huh. tunazungumzia maisha yetu kwa sababu hapa tutaweza kujua ukweli uko wapi na itasaidia sana kujua mbivu na mbichi ndio kesho tusipate wananchi kuweza kulalamika na masuala ya gharama ya maisha tumeweza kusikia upande wa serikali uh, ukieleza kwamba uh, wapo wakulima ambao wanacheka hivi sasa kwa sababu wakiangalia mashamba yao wakitarajia mavuno na kwamba watakuwa na maisha mazuri zaidi tutakulete Samuel Karanja kwa sababu unawakilisha wale wafanyabiashara wadogo wadogo walisia wafanyabiashara hao ikija katika swala zima la gharama ya maisha ukoje ni ukweli kwamba tuna nafuu ama hali ni ngumu asante uh, Rashid let me say that it's very unfortunate um, many times we we rate the political narratives with the economic narratives. The biggest problem that you're having is we, we, we believed what the politicians told us. The reality on the ground for micro, small, medium enterprises is, is a dire situation. And the reason why it's a dire situation, because that is the narrative that the government rode on to get to power. And so ukiangalia kama ni mama mboga, ukiangalia kama ni mtu wa boda boda, kuna mambo ambayo serikali iliwaahidia itawafanyia. But it is not so. Let me give an example. When you look at the boda boda sector, kuna mambo ambayo waliambiwa. They were told, first and foremost, they are going to be to get uh, designated areas of operation. Secondly, they were also told, as you get the designated areas of operation, you are also not going to be paying taxes. The minimum taxes you are going to be, to be paying to the county government will cushion you to do business. When you look at um, what uh, the governor of Nairobi uh, proposed in, the, in their finance bill, they are proposing to hike, you know, to, you know for, for, the, for, that, for, for, for them to put it in the, in the, within the CBD yeah. to, to go up. When you look at the Mamamboga, they were told they are going to get designated areas of operation, markets and everything else. These people are organized groups. And the organized groups, they are supposed to be given government subsidies. Where are the government subsidies? We have demonized that subsidy as a matter of principle. A subsidy is the government looking at what their citizens are going through, then coming up with innovative ways of cushioning them. But if the former regime yeah. became corrupt with the subsidies, this regime must make the subsidies right so that they can cushion the SMEs. Okay. Lastly but not least, yeah. taxation. We are highly taxed. When you look at the government, they, they came and said yeah. that you are going to lower taxes. Look at the import duty. It has gone up with 10%, from 25 to 35%. So importations are very expensive. We are a highly consuming nation. We, have not, we are not in the production uh, sector. So when you look at that, the government is making sure that wanafinya watu wale wanaleta bidha kutoka nje, na pia wale wanataka kuanzisha the productions in the country, pia wanafinyo kwa sababu ya garana, garama ya electricity. It's a very unfortunate situation. Okay, let me bring in Martin John. And on this, and please pass the microphone to Martin Chomba. He's in the chair, the chair Petroleum Outlets Association. Martin, there was a G2G agreement that had fuel was supposed to be subsidized at that level, Adnok and Saudi Aramco. Has it, that had any impact on the cost of energy? Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, go ahead. Your microphone is fine. Oh, thank you very much, um, Trevor. And, uh, okay, and let me switch that microphone to you. Just pass the microphone back there for a bit. 
Yes. So thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Um, mine, I would want to probably bring something into perspective because I think petroleum industry is one of the most misconceived industry in this country. Uh, because one, it is the lowest hanging fruit when it comes to economic discussions. Everything seems to ride on petroleum. First, I would want to say that in Kenya, we don't have a petroleum industry. What we have is a petroleum logistics industry. In a, uh, <coughs> saying this, uh, what I mean is we are not, we don't have uh, economic economic uh, aspects of our own, yeah. we are susceptible to every other economic shocks across the world. Today, as we speak, what is happening across the world is that there is a, uh, com an organization called OPEC. And what they do is that every time we have um, prices coming down, mm -hmm. they usually uh, spike demand by cutting down production to make sure that the prices go up. Irrespective of what the government of Kenya will do, yeah. we, they cannot make decisions of their own. When coming to the issues of the, the G2G arrangement, the G2G arrangement, in my opinion, was ostensibly to make sure that we don't mop up dollars out of the economy in a haste, the way we were doing uh, sports buying of dollars. And today we are buying, I think this is the, the month that we are starting to pay the first batch of uh, the um, the G two G in terms of dollars because the the the, the banks that issues the the LP are the ones who are able to uh, mop up dollars in six months and pay. Yeah. So basically, what this is happening within the industry of petroleum is one when we offer subsidy in. Um, Petroleum, it's actually, we, you and I know that the government does not get money from anywhere else. So if I'm giving subsidy from this pocket, I'm getting that taxes from here. So the, the petroleum development uh, levy that uh, uh, Waziri Moses Kuria was talking about, which yeah. is five shillings and 40 cents per liter, every liter that you consume, whether you know it or not, you pay five shillings and 40 cents per liter. That is the money that is ostensibly supposed to be collected so that it can be a stabilization fund, mm -hmm. not, not a subsidy. And yeah. this stabilization fund is to cushion when yeah. the prices are going up and when the, it's the world prices are astronomical. Today, as we speak, uh, tomorrow the prices are supposed to be read by April. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they will read it, but the indicators world um, world over yeah. because in kenya we consume the best crude in the world is called muban crude it's one of the best crudes that we have in the world the prices of the plats uh, of the um, plats have gone up and uh, we are trading today at uh, around 98 it's expected that it should go up okay. unless the government now come up with an ingenious way of going about it from where i sit you don't want to you don't envy to be with sitting where the government is sitting because either way you're down Okay. Um, Namaste kuleta Moses Kilonzo ambaye anawakilisha watu wanaishi na ulemavu kwa sababu kuna mjadala unaojitokeza Trevor unaanisha kama ambayo wale watu ambao wanaishi mijini wana, wanapata makali ya gharama ya maisha lakini wale ambao wanaishi vijijini labda huenda maisha yakawa hayana ugumu kama vile yako katika hizi town unasemaje wakati tunawakilisha ndugu zao katika ambao wana ulemavu wamezungumzaje kuhusu gharama ya maisha Asante sana Rashid uh, kwa kuwa na mimi siku ya leo uh, first of all uh, Wacha kwanza uh, nizungumzie kuna jambo nimesikia kwa studio ambayo iko na uh, rafiki yangu mkubwa Victoria Rubadiri uh, wale pollsters waki discuss na um, wakisema uh, aina ya maswali ambayo walikuwa wanauliza watu na nikashangaa na ndio maana wa Kenya wengi huwa hatuamini hizi polls kwa sababu ukisema unauliza mtu shilingi elfu moja saa hii inakununulia chenye ilikuwa inakununulia um, last year hiyo ni kama kuuliza wakati wakibaki shilingi tano ilikuwa inakununulia for example uh, kitu ambacho ungenunua 1992 moyo akiwa akiwa president na tunajua hilo haliwezekani vile masiku zinaenda ndivyo pia uh, maisha yanaendelea kupanda na pia pesa zinaendelea ku lose value. Kwa hivyo a uh, uh, Paul Stars hawa uh, uh, mimi si waamini kabisa. Now kwa, kwa, kwa hili ambalo ni kwa uamini kwa sababu unaona kwa gharama ya maisha iko juu zaidi ama uamini kwa sababu unaona kwa gharama ya maisha iko chini. Ni nini ambacho uamini? Siamini hawa Paul Stars kwa kulingana na yale maswali huwa wanauliza watu. Kwa sababu hayo maswali huwa hawapati ha, 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 ha kile ambacho wanakitafuta lakini kile ambacho wanachokipata sasa wanakiportray ni kama kile ambacho walikuwa kikitafuta. Ili hali lile swali ambalo waliuliza halikuleta haswa hicho ambacho walikuwa wakikitafuta. Mwanzo nataka ushikilie hapo kero nitakupa nafasi utuambie sasa ni nini ambacho ulikuwa unadhani kwamba walikitafuta wakakikosa utakupa nafasi utuambie zaidi eh, ni yapi ambao unadhani kwamba kama ungeweza kutumia swali lao vizuri wangepata kuweza kuwakilisha yale ambayo 
nafsi yako lakini tutazungumza hayo na mengine na vile wadam leso kwa absolutely tutaenda katika break kidogo na Kiswahili ishia hapo a quick break we have the cabinet room on the other side we'll come back and also be with us the experts are also still here with us this is the shareholders center and also we have Kibra and the Chatter Hall right after this break all right the big conversation continues <laughs>